Welcome back to Daily Planet Goes Green. You know, Kim, this time of year, winter turning to spring, great to get out and feel the sun, the warmth of the sun Oh my gosh, absolutely. I've been waiting for this for a really long time. But as much as we enjoy the sun on our face, it has a more important use, solar power. That's right. Many homes these days are running on solar power. But that wasn't enough for the guy in this next story. He wanted his house to face the sun all the time. Owning a house means maintenance. There's a good chance your house maintenance doesn't require this. Ben, can you turn the house on? Luke Everingham needs to oil the wheels on his home. And that's best done when the house is moving. Luke lives in a rotating house. It's his own design. Someone made a, a comment to my wife uh, about their new house, and she said, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a house that you could move? And I just started to think, why not? Before Luke built his rotating house, he was living in this farmhouse, just 15 meters away. We had to go outside to see the views or, or any wildlife or anything like that. And uh, it was very dark inside. In summer, it lacked airflow. It was very hot. He wanted to build a home that would give his family great views, great airflow, and lots of sunlight. He came up with this octagonal design. There's the same view off every room. Basically, there's five meters of floor-to-ceiling glass in nearly every room. Next step, put the house in motion. There's two drive motors. They're situated 180 degrees apart, and there's 32 of these wheels. Each of these wheels has got a five-ton rating. The wheels travel this 60-meter track. The track is an example of how building a rotating house can be tricky. This track has to be perfectly flat. Otherwise, the undulations in it would cause distortion in the framework above. Distortions that could make the wall linings crack. The challenges were that everything's got to be perfect. Unlike a normal house where a builder's happy to be 20, mill out here or you know an inch out here an inch out there this is either absolutely perfect or it's a failure there's nothing in between the house weighs 50 tons but luke built the support system to handle a 360 ton load we over specified it and over engineered it because i didn't want to be in a situation where we'd ever be changing equipment or it would be wheels would be wearing out this central bearing and spider web of steel girders support the house there's thousands of welds in that great big rotating spider web. Otherwise, you could end up with one side up like that and one down like that. A touch pad sets the house in motion. We just press, say, living room mid, follow the sun, go, and then there's 4,800 reference points on the encoder, and the computer knows 365 days a year at any time of the day where the sun will be. Well, when we first decided to build the house, we thought, oh, we probably won't move it very often, but, but now that we've got it, we move it all the time, and, um, yeah, you probably tend to take it for granted that it is just such a useful thing, and, and we move it so much. So that the home could still function properly, Luke had to engineer quite a few things differently. All the services, and there's eight of them, like electricity, water, gas, sewage, telephone, antenna, uh, and they all come through up the dead center of the house, which is down the middle of the bearing here. The wires are bound together in a high-grade flexible cable that allows them to turn with the house. We've experimented with it. We can turn it 720 degrees without any significant stress on this flexible services loom, but we've restricted it to 360 because that's all we really need. The house turns at a very comfortable speed of 160 meters an hour. You can make two full turns every hour. When you're in the house, you don't even notice the movement. It starts up and slows down gently thanks to the variable speed drives on the motor. But they do have a slight side effect. The movement of the house is, is perfectly silent without the variable speed drives, but they've introduced a, an electronic sound which is particularly apparent on start up and wind down. But Luke has found a filter that could make them quiet again when he builds his next home. And he does plan to build a next home.
I'd love to build more rotating houses. This is Mark 1 and Mark 2 could be even better. And if you're wondering just how much it costs to rotate a house... We're using two 500-watt motors, uh, which are about two-thirds of a horsepower. So they're about the size of a washing machine motor. We run them for about an hour a day. In Australian electricity costs, that's about 12 cents a day. So you're looking about a about dollar a week to rotate the house. Cheers. And for that cost, you can turn your dinner table toward the setting sun. Gab, could you go and turn the dining room to the river, please? Uh -huh.